deals with opioids and mm -hmm. dealing with where that stems from. How did someone of her socioeconomic background, her education level, get addicted to these pills? And we deal with that. We deal with how does someone who works in the medical field grapple with infertility? Well, it happens. Mm -hmm. So for us, I think um, the movie is just about stories, and that's the conversation that we hope gets started, is that as women of color, we deal with the same things that everybody else deals with. And just add the fact that we're black women on top of it. <laughs> so, um, and because we're supposed to be strong, we can't talk about that. So this is a time when we got to show vulnerability, take off the cape, hang it up on the wall, and just be. So. So what did you all feel was the most important part when it came to portraying our sisterhood? Authenticity. Authenticity. Wow. Same time. Yeah. <laughs> um, Why? It's, it's, for me as the writer, the first thing was I wanted to tell a story about all four of these women. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, watch our movie, it's not one woman's story. It's all four of them because I have a group of friends and each of us has a story. Mm -hmm. And yeah. one story is not more important than the other. You know, our friend, our, they, sometimes they overlap, sometimes they don't. So that was, I wanted to show something real mm -hmm. on paper. And then from paper, both of us wanted to populate our movie with people that look like us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had all, all four of us are represented in different ways. Like we have a, a lighter skin one, we have mm -hmm. the natural hair. And it wasn't a, hair. I'm the natural <laughs> hair girl. <laughs> yes. um, and it wasn't with even self. a conscious thing it was just this is these look like our friends mm -hmm. and I'm I don't put any heat in my hair I typically wear wash and goes awesome. but humidity um, so <laughs> mm -hmm. I you know I, my only requirement to hair makeup was there is no heat going in my hair okay. be as creative as you want to be there's no heat we have one actress that wears we we have Megan who I don't did you ever go to hair no. Exactly. <laughs> her hair is short. She was like, I don't need to go to hair. But we wanted yeah. all oh, of that. Maisha Oliver, shout out to Maisha. Yeah. did set the look and did the cut and everything. And then after that, we kind of just left it alone. Mm -hmm. I was in rehab a majority of the time anyways. Um, Your character. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in rehab you know, during okay. filming. Yeah. 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 And, uh, She'd come and shoot you know. and go back. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, wait, okay. Because you know, as as the, the directing part of it, I hated like going even near the hair and makeup trailer. Because I'm like, we gotta be all set. I gotta you know get ready yeah. to do that. So literally, when I go in there, I'm like, am I good? Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but to your question, I think you know, at the end of the day, we don't have enough for like young people can look at themselves and see themselves on camera and feel like they can get through anything and mm -hmm. they can accomplish anything mm -hmm. and that sky is not even the limit for what they're capable of and we don't you know again as I said earlier we don't have all those films that we mm -hmm. used to have so for us it's it's a blessing to be able to put something out into the world where they can see themselves and they can help mold and shape the way that you see the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> were there moments during filming where you felt, you know, you were actually that character? You became emotional or you just, it, it took, oh, you know. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, for my storyline in particular, at first, in earlier drafts, my character wasn't infertile. And I personally can't have children. So I was like, okay, here's an opportunity to talk about something that is really real. It's real in my life, but it's real for a lot of women. And there was a particular scene um, where my character gets back with her love interest. And it stemmed from a conversation I had with my little brother, ironically, when I found out that I, you know, I had to have a hysterectomy. And it wasn't that I couldn't have kids anymore. It was, what if I fall in love? and he doesn't want me because mm -hmm. I can't have his children. And my little brother, who is probably one of my favorite people in the whole world, says to me, if he loves you, it doesn't matter. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna add that in. And it was actually one of my favorite scenes to write because it was so vulnerable and she's so open and she's so like, okay, here's my truth. Here's everything. You're either gonna run or you're not gonna run. And he doesn't run. And 
for me, that was probably one of my favorite scenes to shoot, but it was also the scene that I'm like, I know I suck in this. I know I suck in this scene. Like, <laughs> just let's just get this done. And she's great. So. Thank you. Yeah. So that was probably that moment. And for the me. thing that was ironic is that he didn't run, but she did. Mm, because in her do. mind, she told herself yeah. a story mm. that what he was going to, how he was going to react, no matter what he said, his reaction in her mind was one way, so her character went. And I, that's what I love about her writing is there was so much complexity in it and so much to play with. Like, even the scene, you know, in that same scene where he asks her if she's pregnant, you know, in that moment, I was like, don't ask, like, it's a scary thing. Mm -hmm. Ask, like, that was like, that would be, that would make your world if she was pregnant because you're really into this girl and to find out that she's not and she can't. So there was just so much to play with. And, and I think that that's how it is in real life is there's so much complexity to how people experience life and, and um, what their worlds are and just everything. And I think that this film really represents that. And I think it's important because each one of these stories are completely underrepresented. They're not shown in movies. And if you're, they're shown in movies, they're shown about that big in comparison to everything else that's happening. And as women, this is really our lives. These are the things that we deal with behind closed doors and we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, we need that. We need to know that we're not alone. We need to know that we're not the only person dealing with these things. And, and we need to be encouraged to be there for each other and to take pride in, in even our struggles and in making it to the other side. So. Um, I have to have a question. So you mentioned you have friends and like family members or things like that. So where did you get the research for these women? I mean, for each of the women, were there people that you talked to? Um, or? No, I pulled a lot from personal experiences. There are some lines of dialogue that are actually conversations that I was like, well, I'm using that. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no, <laughs> no. Um, the biggest research I probably had to do was for her storyline. I mean, I have addiction in both sides of my family, but I never dealt specifically with opioid addiction. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to really touch on why. Not what they look like when they're addicted, not all of that stuff, but the why. How do, and it hits women that are upper middle class, mm -hmm. that are educated, that are that you're not your typical drug addict. Mm -hmm. How did this woman get here? So that was the one I probably spent the most time researching. Everything else was literally pulled from my life. Like, oh, yep, I'm mm -hmm. using that. And then yeah. every, I think for me personally, as when you're an actor writer, you're also um, a little bit schizophrenic. So <laughs> you are sitting in the room and I'm like, oh no, I'm going to put myself here. And I'm like literally acting out all the scenes yeah. and mm -hmm. there are pieces of me. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Of, yeah. In each character, there are also pieces of me mm -hmm. that I was like, okay, that part of um, Patrice is me. This part of Deirdre is me. Mm -hmm. This part of Suzanne is me. Mm -hmm. And not the addiction part, but that need to not, you know, to, to constantly be perfect, that need to say everything is okay is where I parallel with Tyra. Tyra, okay, it's okay, good time. I'm not in. I have <laughs> zero addiction. <laughs> wow. I don't even drink. JK, JK. Like, no, no joke. Like, <laughs> my name is Tamara, and. I'm not, I'm not an addict. My addiction is to control. Yeah. Like, I'm addicted to control. But, and no, so it was just a lot of personal, a lot of, you know, reflect, like, as every draft of the script, is this authentic? Is this real? Mm -hmm. Is this, you know, and I'm a huge, huge stickler for dialogue. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, does this sound right? Is this really what this character would say? And at the um, table read, I gave the actors, you know, I said, first off, I'm not Shonda Rhimes, so you have every right to change yeah. my dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, um, if that doesn't feel right, as long as you get the essence of what I meant to say, mm -hmm. we'll be good. If something just does not ring true, and I'm proud to say that about 99% of my yeah. dialogue is on it's that script verbatim. Oh, nice. Like, That's rare. like right. it wasn't, yeah. I didn't change anything. Yeah. So I was like, oh, they got it, yay! Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I love it. Awesome, Megan, you, uh, real quick, um, you, you previously did an interview on uh, Impact Theory and was talking about your experience as, you know, this being your directorial debut yeah. and kind of battling the, the self-doubt, but how was that experience working um, with the, with Cameron and, and the entire cast and yeah. being able to get over that self-doubt? Um, you know, I think I always, I think I will always kind of have it a little bit. And I think the moment, and I don't know if I would call it self-doubt, but it's just, um, 
you know, a slight bit of like, ah, what am I doing? And, you know, am I doing this good or am I doing a good job? And I, and I think I don't want to lose that because I think it keeps you humble and I think it keeps you activated to constantly challenge yourself um, and constantly grow. But it was incredible for us to get to do it together because we leaned on each other and we leaned into each other and we trusted each other. And even moments where we disagreed, we had such mutual respect to try it both of our ways and to find a compromise um, without losing either integrity and, and ultimately making that integrity a <coughs> joint integrity. Um, bless you. And I just think. Um, it just was very fun to do it this way and very rewarding because you don't miss anything when you have two people paying attention to everything and we're both already sticklers. We're both like perfectionists <coughs> in the sense of like, we don't like cutting corners, we don't like anything to look cheap. We, you know, we're very, we pay attention to everything. So when you have two people doing that, it just, it changes the whole entire game. And so, um, yeah, it just, just an incredible experience for the first film out the gate. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to do it any other way, and I feel very blessed and fortunate to, to do it with her and um, to, to do her material because I think that it's a very specific thing and it was the right thing and the perfect thing, not just because it's something that I'm proud to be a part of and I really care about the storytelling, but also just the tone of it led to allowing us to really like lean into every single moment, every single twist and turn. So, um, what would you say, if anything, was a challenge for the both of you guys as far as having directing, acting, writer, actor? If what were there any challenges to making the film? Oh, there were lots of them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> any component, you know, when you write something, you have um, as my other best friend is a writer and when she read my script she's like you write like a director and I was like what, what does that mean like am I not a writer she's like no you write how you see things so I write how I see things but I write how I see things so learning how to take what I see and make it what we see wasn't always easy because <laughs> I'm like I didn't write it that way and she's like I, just, I know like I just it was, thought about this scene in the beginning of the movie with the girls, with the younger girls, and we had shot we had shot one thing, and I was like, I want to get one more thing, and she was like, Well, that's not how I see it. I was like, That's fine. That's how I see it. She was like, Okay. <laughs> she was like, We'll shoot it both ways. I was like, All right. But it was funny because it, you know, there was always that, always um, and I wouldn't even say push and pull, but it was just like that compromise of like, right. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and compromise on this, and it and it was the best thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's I think is the harder part being a writer, director, actor, director. For me, I'm a perfectionist, so I'm constantly, both of us are like second guessing ourselves. Like, no, I think we need another take. And there was one scene that she shot, <laughs> and I was like, we got it. And she's like, no, I didn't feel it. I'm gonna do it again. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we go and we get to editing. And at first, like, she throws in the take that she wants. No, just, Ruth did that. You know, she's like, I don't know. Then she looks back, and she's like, I think I want to use this take. And I was like, let the record reflect. That's <laughs> <laughs> take three, and that's the take I said, and you're killing it. Okay, that's I all. I didn't even know what I was saying. <laughs> and she was like, shh. Shut up! I was like, I'm just saying. Like, I told you, you wasted time doing this again. When I t so it's like trusting that component mm -hmm. because we can't see it yeah. when we're in it. We can yeah. feel it, but we can't see it. So there'll be times I'm like, oh, I'm out of pocket on that, and she's like, we're not. We can move on. And then when you're making an indie film, um, you got this much time to do a lot of yeah. things. So it was like, we didn't have time to spend six hours on one page scene. It was like, no, you, we got three takes max and we got to get out of here. But we were just playing the work. I just thought about the scene, the last scene of the, the makeup between you and Walter and the take you were using. And I was like, TT, I was like, I feel like, I feel like the other take, she was like, nope. I was like, okay. And then, and then I asked her again later, I was like, did you um, did you want to change that take? Because I feel like the other two was like, nope. I was like, okay. And I came into editing the next day, and she had been working on it, and he played the scene, and it was changed the take, and I thought it should be. I was like, so you changed the take? She was like, yep. <laughs> that was all she had for me. I was like, that's fine. She was like, I mean, I wasn't going to say. And she was going to let it ride, but what, and that we both did, because there would be times when, like, there were scenes that she would do, and I'd be like, 
not good. No, nope. we should be in the close up or we should be in the wide. Yeah. And I just, but <laughs> we also learn that both of us, she's a Leo, I'm an Aries. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm stubborn. Like, I'm, I want what I want when I want it. So we had to learn to both be like, Okay, the, and that's how we've all, yeah. not even with this, it's how we, our relationship has always been. Like, I know for her, like, you can't browbeat her into doing something. You say what it is that you want and let her come to the conclusion by herself. And I'm the same way. Yeah. So when those times when we disagreed, it was like, just go to our separate corners. And normally we come up like, you know what, so I was thinking, um, <laughs> you might have you might have been right, but I'm not saying you were right, but you might have been on to something. And you're like, so I was right? I didn't say that. I'm just saying, I really thought you were on to something. So it was that, but it was... Yeah. Like you said, it's sisters. Like that's yeah, it's the same thing. I'd be like, you was right. I win now though because I admitted you were right. So 